79% of people had no idea who their elected representative was. In my time, 16 years on the East Ryan of Yorkshire Council, I maybe saw three people ask questions. Anyone can do that. For whatever reason, very, very few people do it. There are 3.6 million people in this country with a motorbike licence. How many people are here? How many people are members of MAG? This isn't just about us. Future generations will never know the freedoms that we have had, ever. But they will have no freedoms if it continues the way it's going. Obviously thanks to Pete for nominating me for this. Some of the points have been touched on by other people, so I'll apologise for that, but I think it's important to reinforce some of the things that we would like to see happen in lobbying. From my personal point of view, the ban on ice motorcycles, it took me a long time to work out it was nothing to do with in-car entertainment. But the banning of ice motorcycles, motorcycle theft, increased restrictions on our motorcycling, Will it still come from Europe? Probably not. To look at lobbying and how it works, try and understand a little bit about the people that aren't here, your average person in the street. In 2011, the BBC made a big thing on a YouGov survey which suggested that 79% of people had no idea who their elected representative was. They didn't know the name of the councillor, they, didn't know the, they knew the name of the MP, but they'd never spoken to them. And that is a reality. As an elected member for 16 years, I encountered people who, I, who didn't know the difference between a parish council, a town council, a county council, and a unitary authority. And they thought they knew what an MP did, and sadly they were a little misguided. So a lot of confusing things going on. And it's trying to get people to engage with the right people on the right subject when you lobby for change. Locally, we've all encountered those roads. Recently, I went to North Yorkshire. I thought the East Riding had some bad roads. I went up to Scarborough, and there's some pretty awful roads up there. Not something I would lobby on. It's not my area, but maybe it's something I should do. And maybe it's something we should all do, is lobby our local representatives to make the roads safer. When we look at local elected officials, these are the people who make some major decisions for you, your family, your friends, your neighbours. You look at me from the council estate in Beverly, yet I was sat with a 500 million pound budget making decisions on everything from working with the police, licensing and public protection, and then going into meetings with cabinet mem fellow cabinet members to discuss how many houses we would like to build in an area. These high level issues were something that I was engaged with and there are people in your areas doing similar things. Just moving on slightly when we go to the MPs, the BBC also had an interesting one in 2022, you may note the date, that 35% of the UK population stated that they trusted the national government. 42% of the population reported that they trusted local government and 55% trusted the civil service. Whether this will change in the next few months, I doubt it. Something to look at is our MPs, most of them have changed and we're still seeing the differences, their ideas, their viewpoints. But at the end of the day, we do get lost sometimes in the fact that He's an MP, she's an MP, he's a councillor. They are human beings that have been shaped by the world they live in. They may be directed by the policies of their political alliances. And I'll be the first to admit that to get things done, you have to make alliances. You sometimes have to make concessions against what you firmly believe in to push through something that you know needs to happen. And this is what happens behind closed doors in many councils. When it comes to making a difference, the police, like the politicians, react to volume. Now that's either very vocal or large numbers of residents and constituents who want their support 
then you may find you'll get a greater chance of getting that support in an election year. What can you do? In an election year, there'll be hustings. You can put questions to the candidates, usually MPs. The councillors don't usually do that large style hosting. But when there's a general election, your MPs will be looking desperately for anything they can latch on to, to get them in the media, and they will support it, and they will push it as far as they can. Might be different after the election. When it comes to council meetings, in this area we have a unitary authority that does about 500 different things. Other places have county councils, but they all have councillors. All those meetings, a resident of that region can ask at that meeting a question. In my time, 16 years on the East Rhine of Yorkshire Council, I maybe saw three people ask questions. Yes, they may have wrote in. Yes, they may have emailed. Never got an answer. Never followed it up. But three people asked questions, got the picture in the press, got to speak to the councillors, got to look them in the eye and ask them a question. Anyone can do that. But for whatever reason, very, very few people do it. Your local councillors will hold meetings, surgeries. The surgeries you will usually find in the town marketplace. Depending on the organisation, they may even have an office or rent a venue. You can go down there. You can email, ask a question, but say you're going to turn up and get an answer. And sometimes the problem is you've got to be extremely dogged to get that answer persevere. My time on the council was interesting, fascinating, expanded my mind on many things and when it, I'll, just as an aside to this debate on climate change, I won't get into that, what I will get into is my time on the environmental panel and what we focused on was one thing, hydrogen. How many people realise that hydrogen is injected into the gas supply to give a bigger bang for the buck? These sort of things are happening and very few people even know it's happening. Councillors do. They're involved in it. They're, they're making that policy happen nationally. Hydrogen is supposed to be the future. Your councillors know about these things. They also know about other fuels that internal combustion engines will run on. So why, does it, why, why is a big fight? All I know is, in my personal beliefs, is when it comes to the dirty diesel, that was the vehicle we were told to buy. That was the vehicle we were told to buy. And now you would believe that we have to have an electric vehicle. By the time we've all bought them, I'm almost certain it'll be hydrogen. And we'll all be ruining the day we spent all the money on something that may not be the future. And I would leave all options open, which I'm hoping this is what MAG will do. I may have slightly different figures, but when I Googled it, it said that there are 3.6 million people in this country with a motorbike license. How many people are here how many people are members of MAG and how many people are members of any motorcycling organisation apart from those that are more leisure ones, groups that meet and advocate weekends away and rallies and things like that. Um, I know you've had a long afternoon, I haven't got much more to go, but it's um, if you want to continue with your way of life as it is, I think you could even get it improved, is make a noise Look for supporters in elected members. See if any of them have any affiliation or anything to do with bikers' rights, have made comment on it, have been quoted on it, and then dig into that and get their support, be that to improve the road condition, get increased support from the police, because motorcycle theft in this area is absolutely horrendous. And I know it must be in some of yours. I know a lot of people will never go into the city of Hull on the motorbike because they know it won't be there when they go back for it. The other side of that is, I was there when we were lobbied to put in more provision for motorcycles to park in the little market town of Beverly. And every one of those spaces has those big metal um, lock things with the arms on that you can lock your bike to. And I would say that if I've walked through Beverly a hundred times, once I've seen a bike locked on it. There's motorbikes parked there, but they're never locked to it. And my belief is, and I hope some of you understand it, it's not about stopping people stealing your bike, it's slowing them down, and that's sometimes all you can do, is slow them down with a really good lock attached to something like that. In various areas, we all know they'll come down with their angle grinders and cut it, and they'll take it if they want it. All you can do is slow them down to give you a chance to stop them. 
But all I can say is, the final thing is, email, letters, speak to them, ask them questions. Absolutely be dogged in following up on chasing down and getting an answer to your questions. But try and be realistic in your questions. You're dealing with a lot of people. I, I fielded a lot of questions on subjects that I knew nothing about. I would then go to offices in various areas, the blind civil servants behind us, but they had been in that job for years and they would come back with an answer and then I could get you your answer. But you need to be dogged. You need to keep at people to get an answer. When it comes to um, our local police and crime commissioner, I've met him several times. I've been on the police and crime panel with him. We've debated various subjects. My personal opinion is that one of the best things we ever did was fund Op Yellowfin for the East Riding and get more off-ride motorcycles for police to ride to chase motorcycle thieves that they said they couldn't chase because they just go off the road and we can't get them. They now get those. Apparently, motorcycle theft has reduced and those officers are almost always deployed now to rural crime. And what you will see is, if someone steals a half a million pound combine harvester, they will be chasing them, they won't be chasing the guy that stole a 5,000 pound motorbike. If they steal, and it's quite common now, 10 sat-navs out of those combine harvesters, that 5,000 pound, it's a bit like that. But what it always is, is on numbers. There are not the resources to do everything we would like to do and you would like us to do. Elected members and the police will react to numbers. And that's what you need. You need a good argument, a good question, get them on board, because at the end of the day, this isn't just about us. Future generations will never know the freedoms that we have had, ever. But they will have no freedoms if it continues the way it's going, in my opinion. So as a final thing, ride safe, enjoy your motorbikes while you can.